another program. Invite someone. We pray that you will be blessed as we share from the Word of God. Stay tuned. God bless you. Uh, this evening we want to discuss the topic, the dark side of leadership. In every leader there is a dark side. This dark side refers to inner urges, compulsions, motivations, and even dysfunctions that drives us towards success or undermine our accomplishments. In this side, you are driven by selfish, selfishness, deception, pride. These are some of the things that encompasses uh, this side. And as a leader, these things will only put you in a position where you can be a dismal failure. The Apostle Paul gives us a perfect description in Romans 8 as to how this site can really operate and how it can affect you. And he also cited what we need to do in order to conquer this site. For the dark side can be conquered yeah. and we do not have to live on that side. Gentlemen. Well, during the course of the new week, beginning the 22nd, we'll be running what we believe is a very strategic and very pivotal um, seminar. We'll be offering this resource to the nation. It's free. And um, the, the theme of, of the seminar is inner healing, dealing with the dark side. It is not restricted to leaders. Every human being under the sun has got to deal with this level of this, uh, dysfunction. And so, when, as we look across the society, you know, the leaders are under the microscope, but as we look across the society, we observe that this is a real challenge. And so, this resource is offered. The facilitator is Sister Gloria Gray, um, a certified um, uh, counselor, someone who has done um, tremendous s studies and also exposed herself by the grace of God um, to the Word. And um, she believes in in authority, and um, God is God is using her tremendously in this regard to bring relief, deliverance and comfort to many across the world. She's a Trinidadian, um, but she loves this nation with a passion. And so th this, this will be um, offered. But long before we kind of put it this way, David, a gentleman I love, a celebrated leader, not just of the Jewish people, but of the, in the world, David, his stories are known, his victories, his conquests, they're all known. And um, his, some of his um, failures, they are quite um, dramatic and they're also known. But there's one feeling that he provides tremendous insight. This is the Bathsheba event. But just going past Bathsheba, um, after he attempted to cover up what he did, he brought a husband who was a general from battle. And try as he, he did, he was unsuccessful in getting Uriah, the gentleman's name, to go home and fellowship with his, with his wife. And uh, that man was a committed soldier. The end result is, David decided, somehow, he was going to turn a corner in his personal life and sent that man back to the battle with his own death message. 
we know that this thing wounded David because he reflected and he wrote his thoughts in the psalm, Psalm 51. Some people say it's a haunting psalm, but it's a true psalm. You know, he, he begins the psalm by saying, Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, he throws himself completely at the mercy and the grace of God. He asks God, Dot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. You and I get the report about men who are involved in killing their wives senselessly and then killing themselves, or some of them face the courts. You and I don't get an opportunity to hear from them any remorse. You and I don't see how they suffer. You and I don't get an opportunity for these men to tell you of the inner pain that they go through. But I'm sure they do go through the pain and the anguish. David writes for all who have ever violated, who have ever transgressed. And he, he talks about a deep pain, deep within. And if you believe that this is restricted only to leaders, no, it's right across the whole sphere where men live and operate. Men and women, if you think it's restricted only to men, you have another thing coming. This thing, as long as we're humans, there is a level of dysfunction that challenges um, every inch iota of our character. And that's why we're offering this resource to the nation. You know, Pastor, um, the passage of scripture in Psalms 51, it's not only a brilliant exposition of the struggles that we, we face as leaders, but I think more importantly, um, it brings home the, the point that is a barbarian in each and every one of us. Um, salvation um, accepting Jesus Christ helps, it saves, and it reduces the tendency within us to have or to display flaws in character. In David, um, in the scripture there in Psalms 51, it points to the need, points to the fact rather, that we need to strengthen the inner man. The inner man is what would really help us when we are confronted, and, and I know we are confronted time and time again by situation connect, that can either make us strong or stronger leaders or situation that God can cause us to fail. By strengthening the inner man, we will develop the ability, we develop the resolve to say no or to say yes. It will further help us to develop what is seriously lacking in society, absolutes or absolute values. At times as leaders, we find ourselves that we are very relative. We try to be very relative. We are very lukewarm. We have an inability to decipher what is right from what is wrong. So I think David is hitting on a very important point here. Um, this, the strengthening of the inner man, that is what would help us um, to really um, develop into strong leaders and to develop strong character. When, when we take into consideration the scenario of the Judites to King David, in my mind I don't think he set out purposefully to commit the act that he committed. But it just tells us, you know, I've learned and I've been hearing over time that the characteristic of a tea bag can only come to the fore when it is put in the right environment and that is in hot water. When the environment is right, things that we don't know in sociological terms, they, re they refer to it as the unknown person. Things that we don't know comes to the fore once the environment is conducive to that. And sometimes we, we say, you know, I hear terms like, you see what you caused me to do? It's not really that the person caused you to do it. The environment was conducive to producing what was unknown to you and unknown to others. So, you know, but inside of you. Inside of you. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's a tea bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so um, we, we have to be mindful. And, and what I love about it is that um, help is available. 
Yes. Yes. Health is available. So when, when we see that thing come to the fore, it's not to deny it, mm -hmm. but it's to look to the right source that we can receive the help that is needed. We many times believe that our actions are really influenced by external forces and even change for change to occur it comes through external forces but it really it is what is inside that causes us to respond and to react and in in every one of us even in the illustration of david you find that sometimes you're not even conscious that there are certain things inside of you you move around and believe that you are quite okay but let the right environment come let 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 the most conducive um, environment develop then you go to discover that there are certain things that you never really thought that you are you could even consider it is there and therefore that change will have to come from inside I normally say it is an issue of your core principles when that comes, because you, you, you all, we all will face those kinds of temptation from child to adult. And you recognize that if there are not certain kinds of core values, mm -hmm. sometimes the, the pressure to want to release that dark side is so humongous that you can't resist it. What's on the inside of you will come out. And it may come out at the worst possible time if not dealt with. That's why we, re we remind you of this invitation to come and examine the dark side of you. You see, the dark side will, uh, will be dealt with and you'll have an opportunity to learn about confession. You see, the Bible says in James that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. You believe that you alone can deal with certain circumstances. You cannot deal with those things unless you find a place for confession. And this is what David did. He confessed his faults. And James says we should confess our faults one to the other. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We have got to stop injuring, killing her women. And all these feelings, these pent up feelings, we've got to come and we've got to deal with the dark side and get rid of it. In, in verse 6 of, of Psalms 51, Bear in mind, this is after the fact, mm -hmm. after everything came down. This man is now with his God and with his conscience. And he says, Behold, as he's crying to God for help, you desire truth in the inward parts. In my view, this is one of the clearest pictures of this monumental struggle that every human being could be exposed to. You desire truth in the inward part. So you and I as humans have a have a, a, a duty to ensure that we line our inward parts with truth because that is a requirement of God. And he, he didn't stop there. He said, and the hidden part, this I'm reading from the New King James Version, and in the hidden part. So he speaks of the inward part. And then he speaks of a, a part that he apparently <laughs> had no knowledge of its existence before this Uriah incident. This certainly surprised him. He didn't know he had the capacity mm -hmm. to actually send a man to his death in that context. He didn't know he had such treachery inside of him. And he, he actually did it. And now he's coming before God, who is greater than himself. Amen. And he submits to God. 
I'm asking you, not just for wisdom, not just for you to cleanse my inward parts, but the submission. Give me wisdom. You will make me to know wisdom, how to deal with the hidden part. This, in, in, in our view, is one of the clearest pictures of a leader struggling with the dark side. And there's a safety. If you, if you share your dark side with your friends, that could be a recipe for riot yeah. Yeah. and yeah. confusion yeah. and torment. Your dark side should really be shared with the Creator, the one who understands a yeah. uh, uh, human flesh. And um, it is in this context, as we look across, as we move through our daily business, we discover that not just leaders, but you know, think about think about you, sir, or ma'am. You are so fed up with what you're going through that you're beginning to develop a way out of it. And it may not be a peaceable way. You know, what I like about this portion of scripture is that um, in terms of dealing and, or tackling the dark side, it is important that one admits once you would have discovered that it exists. And we have seen that in the whole approach to David, um, recognizing that it exists and the thing about it is that lots of people refuse or they live in denial mm -hmm. and therefore they cannot really get the kind of help they need and they perpetuate this particular side much to their disadvantage. Um, David did not only recognize that this side exists but then he tried to find his identity in his source um, mm -hmm. who is God yeah. and uh, you see, in God, you discover words like integrity and credibility. And if persons are really going to hold on to you or see you for who you are, um, those kinds of traits, you know, must be prevailing in one's life. And so I like the idea that this man understood that he had a problem and then he found identity in the source in order to deal with the problem. You yeah. know, critical also is the fact that um, the dark side is not just destructive to the individual, but um, let us look at it from the wider spectrum. The, fa the dark side can bring destruction to the family. The dark side of an individual can bring destruction to society. The dark side of an individual can bring destruction to an organization. So we have to be mindful. We have to be careful. The you know, Apostle Paul understood that fully well, mm -hmm. and he, he um, created a different scenario as he was dealing with the notion of sin and how sin, if allowed to run unchecked, could anchor you and, and run riot in your life. And like David, he describes a battle that takes place daily in the life of a man. In, in Romans 7, he said in verse 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. He's showing this battle between um, mankind, within mankind, and the struggle, the constant battle we have with sin. For those of you who don't believe in sin, you have, you have major issues. <laughs> He says in verse 15, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Romans 7 and, and, and verse 16. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is good. Verse 17. But now it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. This is a, a major admission, a major, major sh submission about how deep, how we are conflicted within ourselves. And, um, and I'm not talk talking only of um, Christian people, human beings, because this law of, of sin and here's a man who is using this as an opportunity, who is willing to do good. He says, nothing good dwells. 
For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Verse 20. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. What a salvation. That they side by side with doing good, evil is present. So what do you do? Give up? Throw your hands in the air and say, I can't fight. No, 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 no. This is the battle. And that's why we can appeal to someone greater than ourselves. Yeah. I like how we're describing this constant battle here. For I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warning against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? So as long as we remain in this flesh, we remain susceptible to these kinds of struggles and battles. And um, the best way to describe these things, and you know, we're dealing with sin. Some people want to say, no, you had a bad day. And, um, we're dealing with some major problems of sin. And the Apostle Paul describes them beautifully. He says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with a mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He, does, he doesn't stop there. And he makes this very powerful statement in chapter 1 of, the, of Romans. Verse 1. Verse 1 of, 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 of chapter Romans 8. Chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the flesh. To the spirit. So, in this struggle, not just to control, but to minimize the dark side, there are two walks possible, two roadmaps available. The flesh or the spirit. And, and here Galatians um, 5, 16 to 4 to compound what you said, it says, This I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. In that Romans six in Romans six twenty three. Persons who believe that when they do something wicked, they're not sinning. Or there are there is no sin. In this world, just listen. Yes, you oh dear, Mister. Listen, lady. Hold on. Just, just listen to this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's That's amazing. The only Savior. It's amazing how life experiences test us, and how how we are able to see that testing brings out what is really on the inside of us. When we recognize what is on the inside, even when you might have failed that test, address that part, that dark side of you. If not, it is going to kill you. Do not we walk in the flesh? We do not war after the flesh. It's the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but it's mighty true God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Paul recognized it. David recognized it. I recognize it. Do you recognize it? Because we need to know that the things that we do, it's not because we want to do them, but evil drives us to do them, and the temptation to do these things. And they manifest themselves in a particular environment when it is conducive. The hidden one will reveal himself when you least expect it. We have a responsibility, therefore, even as we look at this um, portion of scripture, so, and I think we heard it before, to strengthen the, the inner man, um, as Paul cited, because there is the very existence of the two natures, the God nature and the sinful mm -hmm. nature, and it is the one that you feed the most that will really mm -hmm. um, yeah. come to the fore. And therefore we have a responsibility to cultivate, the responsibility to strengthen the inner man. So, 
when those times would have come, you would have some kind of a, some kind of, of recourse, something to, 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 to stand on. And we heard about character, you know, the, that's who you are. Um, the real you, when persons are not watching, when persons are not looking, um, if, if you continue to move in a two-faced fashion, you will never really accomplish, you know, the things that God um, wants you to accomplish. You know, even as we, we looked at David as well, um, I'm thankful that David had somebody in his life that could really speak into his life and really rebuke him. We all need um, that kind of person in our life. You know, David, he only came to himself and started to really confess and start to identify these different things that were in his life only until Nathan the prophet came to him and spoke certain things and said, you know, you are the one, presented a nice story. And David, you know, being the kind of people we are, sometimes we want to pass judgment. And Nathan says, thou art the man. And then he broke at that point. We all need people that we could um, look up to, that could speak into our lives, that could give us a good rebuke so that we could get right back on course. That is very clear because, and we must not find ways to suppress this dark, these dark sides. There are so many of us who go out there. And I, I say us because such were some of us. Mm -hmm. We go out there and we find all kinds of things to suppress this dark side. You're hurting so you turn to alcohol and drugs and all these kinds of things. It's not good for you. It's not helping you. You've got to get rid of those things. It's not suppression. It is deliverance. Mm -hmm. And that is what this resource, this whole season from Monday to Friday and um, there will be some day sessions and there will be um, evening sessions Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I think and we invite you to come it's not going to be suppressed you'll be set free Amen. and you'll have the tools to deal with the dark side yes, we'll see you next week Thank you for being part of Choices from Amiokan Joy Join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.